right. Well, thank you for everybody that came. I think we know just about most of you. I don't know you. You're from the dispatch. Welcome, welcome. And I met you before, but I can't remember what your business is way in the back. Yes, yes. Okay, now I remember. Okay, now we knew. The other ones, we, we know who you are. Uh, we we don't. So, well, thank you for coming. We're going to do this every couple of weeks to talk about where we're at in the project and some things that have occurred and what's coming up in the next couple of weeks. So um, I kind of think that the lack of attendance may be as a result of Rochelle and um, Victoria being out in Gourmet Alley along the businesses almost every day talking to people. Um, those conversations are not always um, great conversations, but they're, they're necessary and they're informative and people know that we're trying to let them know what's going on. Uh, for, uh, so it seems like a much different tone and, and, and maybe we've, we've got a little better, better communicating with you and letting you know what's going on. So we have about 10 slides, but we will do Q&A and you can interrupt me at any time. And then we're going to have everybody, George, Heba, Victoria, and Rochelle talk about their areas they're kind of focusing on. But I'll just get you get kicked off and uh, we, can, we can get moving. Uh, so those, I'm Jimmy Forbes, I'm the city administrator. Uh, that's George Duran, uh, senior civil engineer. Uh, Heba El Gundy is our public works director. Victoria Valencia is our economic development manager. And Rochelle Bedell is the communication engagement manager. So this is really your main team that's trying to get, the, get us all through this project and, and make sure we end up in a, in a good spot. Okay, so kicking off, uh, I wanna talk about some of the philosophical changes we've had to the project. Uh, when we first went down this road with this grant, the intent was to convert the alleyways into a pedestrian-only uh, alleyway with no vehicular um, access. And through working with some of our business partners and the community and such, we learned that you can really obtain both in, in a lot of ways. Uh, so we are working on where to put bollards, what to block off, how, uh, how traffic flows through the parking lots, uh, how do we make sure that, say, uh, hypothetically, a business has access to their only parking spot where they need to do work. Uh, so we've worked through those issues, and I think we're in a very good place. Uh, the one thing that we, as staff, did not want to budge on, and this is for the business's benefit, is that we don't want any vehicles in that alley during the weekend. Okay, so some of you who have deliveries or want to get access to certain parts during the week, We'll work through that. We'll, we'll figure out how that works. And in some places, we're putting temporary gates that the business owner can lower and close so they can get access. But during the weekends, we don't want any cars in there at all because we want people in the alleys. We want little kids playing in the alleys uh, while their parents are having a beer or doing whatever. And uh, so that's kind of a non-negotiable. But uh, during the week, I think we have a lot of flexibility and a lot of commitment to make sure that um, – uh, some of these businesses that need to put deliveries, huge pallets, and the only way they can get them in is through the back, we're going to be able to work through that. So uh, that's been a pretty large philosophical change. Uh, there were two things that have happened that we're really happy about is we've been able to restore previously value-engineered work. And if you don't know what that term means, you know, you, you get a, you get a uh, grant amount, you go into the construction market, and as all of you know, construction prices are going through the roof. Uh, you have to adjust some things in the project. And one of the things that we had initially removed was any work on railroad and then the paving from 6th to 7th Street Alley. And those both have been restored. Uh, the Railroad Avenue uh, paving is now part of the pavement management program because it is a city street, and we had planned to repave it at some point. So that's included this year. And then the 6th to 7th Street uh, work will be included in some of the grant uh, monies that we're able to um, utilize as we, you know, the contingency, you know, we had about $500,000 in contingency. Uh, we are also looking at some other grants along railroad through VTA uh, for some beautification, murals, artistic items, and we've gotten a lot of interest from the art community about where um, they can do some projects, our trash enclosures, um, you name it. All right, we have a very active art community, and so uh, there'll be some other enhancements coming up uh, as we get farther along in this this project. Uh, the project continues to evolve. Uh, every time I, we do meet with a business owner or someone in the community, they come up with an idea maybe we didn't have. And that's not totally unexpected in a project like this. It's, it's, uh, it's an infrastructure project first. Uh, and so you see us right now, we're trenching, we're digging things up, we're tearing concrete up. Uh, uh, but the actual um, activation of the area is really dependent on how the businesses embrace the work we've done because if the businesses that have um, 
you know, outlets to the alley directly. They decide they don't want to utilize it. Well, that is a challenge for us to take advantage of all the improvements that have been done. So again, that will occur over time, uh, but a lot of good communication and a lot of good feedback. And then I want to talk about the, the, the parking lot that is on 4th Street and Monterey. As you can see, uh, every day it is a, uh, it's almost, it's going to get paved, what, Thursday? And so that, that parking lot is, Dave owns that lot, and um, we actually, according to the specific plan, do, do not allow parking lots along Monterey. But understanding the circumstances that we have and the challenges that we have with our projects in the near-term future, it was already being used as a parking lot anyway, <laughs> unofficially. Uh, so we issued a five-year permit for that. And uh, we are currently working with Dave Leal as well to um, give the city an opportunity to utilize that parking lot while we are under construction. And so we should have some more information about um, entering into a lease probably next week. But that's going to be 55 spots and um, prime location downtown, um, really close to the bowling alley, which uh, I'm sure Dave is really happy about, but also um, utilizing an asset for everybody to use at least in the uh, short term while we kind of just pull together and try to... Um, to get through this so a uh, great opportunity for the city uh, to work with Dave and his team and uh, come up with some ideas okay I'm going to turn it now over to George George is an engineer and so he is the actual person when uh, we get this feedback and we get this information for you he goes in with the plans he changes them he works with a con construction company and puts it actually into action so George can help you with any of the more technical stuff yes Bruce If you wait, uh, Rochelle is going to answer all your questions about public outreach, so I'll, I'll hold that one, and I bet you she'll answer it. Okay, thanks, Bruce. Good evening, everyone. I apologize for the text. Let me see if I can make this bigger. I don't think, uh, Victoria, do you know how I can make this a little bit bigger? Okay, well, I'll go ahead and read off. These are bullet points that talk about the work that's been done the last two weeks and then what projected work is for the next two weeks. These past two weeks, uh, there's been a lot of behind the scenes type of work on construction projects. There's a lot of material submittals that are submitted to uh, agency and to the designers for review and approval. So there's been a number of submittals that have been submitted for review and approval for various um, items of work out there. Uh, there's been the, so once the material submittals are completed, the materials are the orders. The contractor typically submits the order um, for securing the, the materials for that. So the lighting and the site furniture has already been reviewed and approved, and so those orders have been, have been kicked off. So they're actually technically in the manufacturing phase. Uh, there's been site survey for uh, planners, trash enclosures, sewer lines, and lighting, and by site survey, I mean a, a professional land surveyor goes out there and lays the the actual locations precisely out on the on the on the ground. Um, there's been asphalt demolition, so the future trash enclosures, as well as the future planners, those areas have been excavated. Uh, demo of concrete and alleys for new planners. That's the item I was just talking about as well. Puddle for existing utilities. <coughs> This is where the contractor goes out and identifies or carefully removes the top surface of the existing utilities uh, with the intent of identifying their location, their size, and their elevations. It's slow work, uh, but they're, they're con that's an ongoing process. It's actually a very important part because this alley is decades old. There's little record, so um, this is just part of the process of doing the construction work. Um, and happily, there hasn't been any or Fortunately, there hasn't been any big surprises encountered out there. there. If you can imagine taking the width of the alley is very narrow, so there's a lot of congestion in there. There's storm, water, sewer, gas, and electrical facility. So when we talk about pothole, that's what we mean is just exposing those utilities. Water service installation, this is for future irrigation. That work has been started. Prep for sewer hot taps, that's... Um, all the trash enclosures are going to be connected to the sewer system, so that's part of the work that's, that has been started. And that's actually going to work that's going to be happening these next two weeks. That's the next order of business. They're going to be connecting the sewer laterals from the main to the future trash enclosures. 
potholing for this next two weeks, the ongoing work. There's potholing continuing. Again, that's a slow process, so we expect that to be at least occurring within the next two to three weeks. Um, saw cutting of alleys or, or in the alleys for the future lighting. This is one of the bigger orders of work that's going to be happening. So this will involve moving some of the fence lines, the existing fence lines, up to the beginning of the, of the alleys. And the reason for that is because the, the trench that's going to service the that's going to house the new conduits for the street lights are actually going to run from the entry, uh, uh, the entry points of the alleys all the way down pretty much the length of the alleys. So this is going to be an actual um, trench that's going to go parallel to the alleys. Uh, but that will require moving some of these fence lines. So we expect to engage with some of the business owners to figure out how we can maintain access to some of these areas. Light pole bases, um, there's been a couple of conflicts, a few conflicts with these. Nothing big, it's just something that we have to formally go out there and walk it with the contractor to make sure that uh, we, we place them where, they're, where they need to be. Uh, there's going to be uh, rock work for the slabs. So technically the slabs, the structural work for the triage enclosures is expected to begin in the next two weeks. That's going to get started with placing of the asphalt or with the aggregate and then followed by the concrete, as well as placement of the structural poles. So these are the new poles that are going to be supporting the roof structure for the trash enclosures. Um, and then finally, finalizing the demo. Um, there's portions of the alleys that still have not had demo for the future planners. Uh, so that's expected to continue also within this next two weeks. So sure, questions? Any supply chain? Uh, no. Unfortunately, unfortunately, there hasn't been any. The, our biggest concern was the electrical. Uh, yeah, so those are, have been ordered, and so far there hasn't been any, any surprises for that. Yep. The other concern that we had was electrical coordination with PG&E. That's also going pretty smooth. Applications have... I'm sorry? Yeah, yeah. Well, the scope of work, uh, fortunately, doesn't require transformers. And, and that's where we get into problems with, with coordination with pg &E. So everything so far is moving straight forward. Um, we don't expect any surprises of delays with pg &E. Yep. I'm not sure if I understand you. Well, could you mean us again? We're recording this so other people are also broadcasting it. So we're using the microphone. Just a real quick question. Moving the, tra moving the trash from the alley to the parking lots, the alley used to be concrete, so the 80,000-pound truck could, you know, move across. Is there going to be any upgrades on the asphalt? Because, you know, in the one between 4th and 5th, there's already dips in it. Yeah. For the, so, so bringing the trash. Yeah. So the structural section will continue to be the existing concrete. That's what's going to support all the loading. The new asphalt that's going to go on top of the concrete is not going to be, um, um, it's not going to be affected by the loading. It's, it's rated to support that kind of loading. But it's not like we have a sub-base problem. So the, the concrete is still going to continue to act as the, the primary structural support. So I have a few questions. George, um, a lot of times when we go into the city, doing something on alley, go, we don't have any records, <laughs> we don't know what's there. Are you going to use this as an opportunity to locate and maybe put it on your GI system Absolutely. or something like that so we know what's there? Absolutely. We're taking pictures. We're making. Okay. We're essentially creating an asphalt of the alley. So, yes, okay. we, we are definitely taking those measures. So I have a, you know, a couple lots on the alley. I was wondering if I could maybe meet with you because we could look at our future demands and maybe work with the city to maybe change some of that out now versus later. Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. We can set the time where we can. Because I, I don't want to I, I don't want to come and cut up the alley after you've just paved it because I have to change either the water line or a sewer line or whatever. I mean, now would be the time to take care of that. Yeah, absolutely. We're, we're actually trying to identify, I believe there's two other active projects in the alley, so 
we want to make sure that this work does not get uh, cut into. Mm -hmm. uh, we, I mean, all this time and money being spent to put the work, so we definitely want to make sure that either utility cuts or any other cuts do not happen after we do okay. this project. So um, I'll reach out to you. Maybe we can okay. get together. Um, the other item, and I don't know if it's, you have it in the budget, but um, directional signing, signage for the alley. I was up in uh, Seattle, Post Alley. And one of the things that they had at the entrance to each alley, they had signage that told you what was down there. Now, we don't have a lot there right now, but Koval is opening up. So the directional sign for Koval. There's a vinyl record store behind Garbo's, which is kind of a unique business. It'd be nice to say, hey, that's where it's at. And so, you know, thinking forward that, that we're going to need some type of directional signage and just to say what's in that alley. If, if we're going to move in that direction. So, you know, maybe if you've got the funds, you know, maybe now it's time to do it rather than later, uh, and then you can, something that you can add names to that. And then uh, I had one other comment in talking to some of the merchants that I talked to that are, their business has been affected. And one of the things, and we threw out some some ideas, but one of the things that, that, they seem to like the idea is enforcing the two hour time limit on the street. Because what's happened is some of the business owners or, or, and employees, they're not parking in the parking lot, so they're parking in front of their businesses. And so enforcing that would free up a lot of that parking because we still have, you know, Gardner uses a lot of parking, there's second floor office buildings. So in the past, when they did do it periodically, the next day it was amazing how much parking was available on the street. Uh, thanks, Gary. Yes, we have a plan to enforce. Uh, we're going to start softly and give uh, kind of fake tickets for a while, letting people know that you've exceeded two hours. Uh, but you are right. Our biggest issues are, are with the businesses who employees park in front and they're there from 8 in the morning till. Six. So uh, we do have a community service officer that's going to start doing that enforcement. Okay. I, yeah, I think that's going to make a big difference. I, I think one of the things that you need to do is educate some of these people. I've had people park in some, like uh, the building on, on 5th Street, the neighbors across the street would park in front of the businesses. I just wrote a nice letter and said, you know, you just sleep across the street, but these people are trying to support their families. Mm -hmm. And it's really important that this, this parking is available for them. And, you know, generally it always worked. They, they never parked there again. Yeah. So it's really the messaging and really understanding what those, those parking stalls are worth. And, you know, it's, it's 30,000 a year in sales plus for each one of those, those, those parking spots in front of a business. And those are the primo spaces everybody wants. Sure. <laughs> and if I can't park in front of the, that building, there's a parking problem. But, um, but it, it does make a difference if something's available, you know, even four or five stalls down, that's okay. People will park there. Oh, there's a parking spot. So let me grab it while it's there. And then they'll walk. So I think enforcement, I think and you, you can try it out, see how it goes. But I personally, I think it's going to make a big difference. I think you're right. All right, next up we have uh, Heather Elgindi who's going to talk to you about some of the major changes and some of the enhancements. So. Hello, everyone. So uh, George talked to you about the details, and I'm going to walk you through the fun stuff. Uh, as you know, uh, there are streetscape enhancements to Gourmet Alley, uh, and this photo here shows the seating areas and uh, planters that we've ordered uh, for installation on the alley per the plans. Uh, and although this photo is quite small, but this is the type of view bike racks and pedestrian scale lights that we've also ordered for installation along Gourmet Alley. Uh, we replaced four of the concrete benches was more comfortable. Uh, six uh, uh, metal benches was back uh, uh, 
seeds support. <laughs> And this is the type of waste uh, receptacles that will also be added to the alley, two per block for a total of, of six. Uh, although we haven't decided on the type of art that we will be installing on the pavement, uh, on the pavement surface yet, um, this element was actually removed from the project and we reinstated it. Uh, we will uh, develop the stencils for the initial installation and the follow-up maintenance in the future using our internal crew, the city staff. I'm sorry? Possibly, that's a good idea. Um, this slide slightly changed, but uh, this is actually one of the uh, good pieces of information that we're sharing with you uh, tonight. Uh, we have been working with the designer uh, to improve uh, the parking lots. Uh, this parking lot is the one located between 5th and 6th. Uh, the existing parking stalls at that location is 86 total. Uh, per the initial design shown here, uh, we would have reduced the parking spaces from 86 to 62 using the existing driveways. Uh, however, after listening to the concerns and knowing how precious the parking stalls are, we worked with uh, the design engineer on changing the, the parking layout, improving the internal circulation. We will eliminate two of the driveways and relocate uh, the border driveways. Uh, and by that, we will increase the parking stalls to 77. And we're in the process actually now of conducting a survey to identify the exact location of the property line along this limit, uh, which could potentially allow us to move the parking spaces by a few more feet and add parking stalls on this side uh, for one and additional two and one by the driveway thereby increasing the parking stalls to 81. This, in addition to our uh, ability to increase the lens available for street parking uh, for seven additional parking stalls. Uh, so we will actually end up with a net gain of parking spaces at this lot. One of the elements uh, that uh, was added uh, to the scope as well was not initially considered when we applied for the grant, but we are using some of the contingency fund uh, to install a safety uh, fencing that will separate the railway tracks from railroad alley. And uh, it was mentioned earlier about adding uh, wayfinding signs uh, for the alleys and, and possibly the businesses. And this is also being planned as part of the scope. Uh, and I should also mention uh, that we will still be able uh, to resurface the railroad alley. Where we're using uh, Cape Seal of the Chip Seal and Slurry Seal similar to the application, almost similar to the application on Gourmet Alley, uh, under another project, this year's pavement rehabilitation project. So it will still be improved along with this access driveway uh, between Lois and uh, Horn Lane at this end. With that, I will pass it on to, to Victoria our economic manager, unless you have questions for me. I, I do, Heba. Um, number one, I'm glad that you're putting the wrought iron 
because uh, the next between Lewis going north, there is a, a wrought iron. I do think four feet is too small. People are going to jump over that. A good example for you to look at is in Emeryville um, along their railroads. I think it's, it's is it A Street Mall or they have a, a kind of a kind of a Santana Row thing. Anyway, but they they actually put a wrought iron fence that curves this way. So you can't climb over it. And it's probably six, maybe six feet, seven feet. And they had a curb that ran along um, the fence. So it was the curb, then the fence. And it had the ability to put some landscaping. And I remember this from 10 years ago because it was like, wow, that's what we need to do in Gilroy. But if you get a chance, I don't, I don't remember the name of the street, but it runs along the, the railroad, and it would be north of the shopping center, I think, I'm, A Street. I'm actually familiar with it, and okay. I should mention that we looked into different types of fencing, uh -huh. and uh, we shared photos uh, for the fencing also that's in Palo Alto and in Mountain View. It's four feet, but has a, a more pleasant design than what's being proposed here. And we got costs from the contractor. Uh, this particular fence was selected based on the overall cost because we're funding using the contingency. Sure. Right. Um, okay. So w we can look into it further, but I'm not sure we will be able to make significant changes. Right. And I should also mention that we're doing survey work uh, to identify where the property line is uh, because there are now poles intermittently standing uh, along the railway right. tracks. Right. We will try to remove them if it's possible and not in, in the Pacific Railroad's right of way. Right. Uh, otherwise, we will install our fence close to our property line. Are you going to run a curb along the alley on that side? Uh, it's not budgeted currently. Okay. All right. All right, hello everyone. Uh, Victoria Valencia, Economic Development Manager. I've met all of you, I think. Um, so I'm gonna talk about the business support and marketing that the city's going to be doing. We're going to be launching a $20,000 marketing campaign highlighting the available parking, walking, uh, walking trails, bike racks, as well as the upcoming events and activities that are going to be taking place in downtown. We're going to be doing increased advertising support for downtown summer events. Uh, we'll be utilizing our utility bill mailers and ads in the local newspapers uh, and boosting some posts on social media as well. We're also going to be popping up at the various parking lots in downtown and around downtown just to highlight that they're available and uh, publicizing that will be there. So hopefully we attract people to come there. Uh, and then we're going to be doing community outreach at the local events. There's also an additional $5,000 investment from Visit Gilroy to give discounted Uber rides to downtown visitors. And that's going to be launching in the next week or so. Uh, this is an example, well, no, this is an example. We have these available on that back table. Uh, these are our downtown parking guides. We've mentioned on there the temporary partial closures uh, that currently exist, but even with those closures, we still have over 300 parking spaces available in these designated parking lots. This next map shows uh, the five minute walking radius from Fifth and Monterey Street. And so you can see a majority of those parking lots are in that radius. Here are a couple of examples of the marketing collateral we're going to be doing. We're going to be launching a campaign uh, with the slogan, Explore Downtown Gilroy Your Way. And again, highlighting that walking, biking, and riding accessibility to our town. This is an, an example of the Uber ad that you'll be seeing. Uh, we're going to be offering, in coordination with Visit Gilroy, up to $10 off of your next Uber ride to downtown Gilroy. And we've selected a point of 6th and Monterey Street to get people there. And this is valid for anyone within a 20-mile radius traveling to downtown. Yes, Emily. 
you know where the point is on 6 and Monterey? Sure. So it's kind of like uh, in the middle right now, and it's there's a radius of about point. 0.25 miles around that radius. So if anyone's getting dropped off Old City Hall, uh, the Clove Art Complex, uh, the Neon Exchange, they would be uh, they would be able to receive that benefit. Wonderful, thank you. Yeah. And there's messaging too. Uh, we'll have a QR code pretty soon, and when you scan that QR code, you'll be able to see that that messaging. Yes, Bruce. Oh, one moment, please hold. <laughs> okay, on that first slide you showed, that one there. So I see this marketing campaign and highlighting available parking and such and upcoming events, but I'm not seeing anything in there that talks about the existing businesses, uh, you know, telling, the, you know, telling, reaching out, getting people to come back down and letting them know there are ample, you know, because as you already know, I'm, you know, I'm on life support. Yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, but know, we I'm, are working with our community partners, Chamber, okay. Downtown Association, Visit Gilroy, to highlight our businesses. Okay. We've identified, gosh, I went through and tracked, I think we have 65 between 4th and 7th Street, 12 cafes, 8 breweries and tap rooms. Okay. So we're, we're tracking all of that, and those flyers are just a start. Okay. And we have the opportunity to develop those further. All right, and you already got my piece that I already sent you? And Did I have you? your piece. Thank you, Bruce. <laughs> we'll, we'll chat. All right. <laughs> All right. All right, so that brings us to the outreach and just the regular updates that we're going to be providing both to the community and to our downtown businesses. So um, one of the first things that we're working on are the daily updates. And these give an idea of what the anticipated activities are for the following day. They're posted daily on our Facebook and Instagram pages. They also sometimes provide a little bit of information about what was done the day of that they're posted. So they vary a little bit day to day, uh, but we're working on getting those out each day. The next one is the weekly updates, and these updates provide a summary of the weekly progress, and they also provide a, a broader project update. Um, these are put out in our email express on Fridays, and then they're also posted to Nextdoor, our Facebook page, and our Instagram page. So for all of our downtown businesses that have signed up for the businesses updates, we are including you on the email express updates. So be reading those as well, because those will contain these more broad updates. And there was a question in the back here. Sorry, we'll bring the mic. Um, quick question, this is great, all electronically and social media. Would once a month, might you be sending out snail mail to uh, property owners? Because I'm asking because there is some senior people who don't have email and different things, so if there might be one thing that's on update or upcoming meetings or things like that, if that's possible. That's a great idea. Um, let's chat. Okay. Um, I'd like to know which businesses those would benefit so that we're not mailing it to um, a large group of people that don't necessarily need that um, physical collateral. Oh, yeah. um, I mean, I can't you, speak for all the businesses, you know, but... Yeah, but so if you that, email me um, or let's chat. I have my business card back here so that we like can talk about it. It's like when they did the P-bid, they sent that out also snail mail. To. Yes, and so. some of those mailings, they're a wide range of people, and so there's a heavy cost to mailing those. So that's why getting a more targeted list would be helpful for us so mm -hmm. that we can just keep that cost down and reach the people yeah. who really need that physical That mailing. should have been with the smoking ordinance as well. They didn't, they didn't funnel that down one either. There was a lot that went out to, that it didn't apply to, to property owners downtown. All right. In addition, we are going to be providing continually regular business updates, and these will be going through the downtown business email list that hopefully you've signed up for. If you haven't, that's the QR code there. You can scan that and add your email list to the list. 
Um, these, I'm hoping we'll get in a cadence of sending them out bi-weekly. Um, at this point, we've been sending them out probably weekly just as we've had um, things shift and change and we need to get information out to you um, at a faster pace. <laughs> so we're hoping to get into a cadence. We're not quite there yet. Uh, but this would be the email list that's pertinent specifically to downtown businesses and have, has that information that's not quite community-wide but more specific to your efforts in the downtown. Since you're here tonight, we just wanted to provide you with a reminder about um, deliveries in this downtown area, specifically within the construction area. If your business is located within the fencing area and you need to receive pallet deliveries, we ask you to please give us a 24-hour notice so that we can coordinate that with our construction team. As they get into this trench work, they're going to be securing the fence, so you will no longer be able to shift it to get your deliveries where you need them to be. You're going to need to contact us 24 hours ahead of time so that we can coordinate that. For deliveries that aren't necessarily pallet deliveries that you can get through your front door, we ask that you use the loading zones that we've constructed, the temporary loading zones in the front on Monterey, so that you can get those deliveries through your front doors. To coordinate pallet deliveries, we have Victoria Valencia's phone number here. Uh, please call her, and she'll coordinate that with their team. Victoria, we do have a question in the back. What if our front door is in the alley? So that's something that I will have you coordinate with Victoria, because we'll need to talk about that offline and look at that individual situation to see how best we can accommodate you. So let's, um, after the meeting, just check in with her and we'll, we'll start working through that. All right. Now the next thing that we're working on is bi-weekly meetings for the downtown businesses. And this will be coming out in one of those downtown business emails, but we wanted to just provide these dates for you tonight because these are the next two that we're planning on. May 15th at 4 p.m., we'll be having a Gourmet Alley Project Perimeter Walk. That's so that we can discuss some of the things that are going on, the progress that's happening, and we can look at it in the space together and uh, answer your questions. Um, following that is going to be May 29th at 6 p.m. We'll have another Gourmet Alley community meeting. Unfortunately, this room here is occupied that date, so we're going to be over in the PD community room. Uh, but it will be a similar format to this one, where we just provide you with updates, an opportunity to ask questions. And then uh, we'll be looking at continuing these meetings bi-weekly as we make our way through the project um, so that we can keep you updated and informed and have an opportunity for you to ask questions. And with that, if there aren't any more questions, I will turn it over to Jimmy. Okay, uh, thank you, Rochelle. So as you can see, there's been a lot going on the last couple of weeks and a lot of things coming up. Uh, the big uh, push will be to get the trenching done. And as Rochelle alluded, uh, we've had issues with people parking in the alley and moving fences, and that just can't happen anymore. It's too dangerous uh, to have an open trench. And so uh, we will have to make those fences where they can't be moved and any vehicles that are parked in the alley are gonna get towed. Uh, so if you have businesses down there that are kind of enjoying a little bit of free time down in the valley right now, it's gonna come to a close, especially as the trenches open up. It's just not safe for people. So, yes. So I was curious about that. There are some uh, red paint on the ground uh, in the alley in front of our building on both sides of our parking lot. Uh, so I was curious if we we're going to be able to still access our parking lot once those trenches are cut. And my other question was, uh, is there going to be a planner put in that area or is that just being cut for electrical? Let's see, I know where you're at. I, I didn't see a, a plan that showed like the exact location of where these planners will go. This is you right here, if you can see my arrow. The, I am, that's my parking lot right yeah. there. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I'll have to defer to George uh, to answer the, the trenching questions. So I can answer the, well, I'll start with the second question. So their original design, were planners near that parking area that you have? Those have since been removed. And so there is no 
uh, planners that are going to be affecting or impeding the ability to get in and out. Um, the planners start from the parking to the uh, to the left hand side of the screen. Okay. okay. So, um, so those boxes that are drawn out, like in right in front of my building in the alley, that's just for them to run the electrical yeah. for the lighting. That's part of the whole electrical scheme, uh, trying to get prepared for that. Those are, those are not planner boxes that you see there. Okay, yeah. gotcha. Thank you. But, but to, I think you also asked, are you going to lose access to your alley? You will for a little bit, and Victoria's, I believe, been uh, going to be communicating with you when that's going to occur and what arrangements we can make uh, to give you some access to do your work. But that's inevitable in this project that at one point or another, the alley will be closed for some period of time while they're trenching. Looks like a great job on the the replanning of the 5th and 6th Street parking lot. Uh -huh. Do you have the 4th and 5th one, fifth uh, Street done they're, yet? They're not done with that yet, but once they do that, they'll probably update in the next meeting or one after that, but this is the one that uh, they've been spending the most time on. Yeah, that looks yeah. really nice. And, and the thing to remember about the lot is that you are going to lose spots regardless because of substandard parking spaces, ADA spots, but we've gotten some good feedback and some good ideas, and uh, George and his team got creative about how could we do this better and so um, there you go. Yeah. Are there any other questions? Okay. Well, I hope you can join us. Uh, we wanted to do a perimeter walk uh, with the downtown businesses as well. We think it might be kind of interesting, and you can ask questions of, of the people who are down there doing the work and, and such. So that will be our next one in two weeks. Uh, we will also be hanging around afterwards if you want to chat or go through the maps or anything and get some more specific questions. But uh, I do appreciate everybody who's been kind of helping us. I think we're, uh, we're, we're doing much better. I think people are understanding the project a lot better. And the communication has definitely been two-way. Uh, we've heard a lot of good input for the businesses, a lot of feedback, and a lot of things that we've been able to address, as you can see. So communication is very important. If you have a problem, we have people to contact. Uh, people that are here to try to help you and get through this, but uh, hang in there. It's going to be sweet when it's done. So um, all projects are painful, but we'll, we'll, we'll do our best to, to keep you going. Okay? All right. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you at the next one.